Hi, my name is Mike Brady and I'm the uh, producer and presenter of the channel Ocean Liner Designs and today I'm extremely excited because I'm here at my production studio which is where I work during the day. We've got some very special guests. I want the big puffs, man. I don't want the big puffs. Look at this, louder and louder. These are members of the Australian Salvation Army and they've travelled over an hour here today to record a song. But not just any song. Almost 110 years ago, and on the other side of the world, their forebears, members of the Canadian Salvation Army, almost 170 in total, had stepped excitedly aboard the ocean liner Empress of Ireland, bound for England. 1940 was a big year for the Salvation Army. It was the International Congress in London, where the army took over about half of London. They had all these venues built and people came from all over the Salvation Army world. They'd take their bands and their singing groups and uh, in war national dress, it was just a big event. The Canadian contingent in particular, they took the Canadian staff band. Excitement levels were high. It was a chance really to showcase what your country, Salvation Army, looked like. It's no secret that the 1800s were a tough time for many. Poverty was rife and workers lived in appalling conditions. So many were busy just trying to eke out their own living and survive that it seemed as if nobody cared about the most downtrodden and unfortunate. But then, in the mid-1800s, a new church and charitable organisation began to provide disaster relief and aid to society's most down and out. And that organisation was the Salvation Army. The, the Salvation Army in the last few years of the 19th century and the early years of the 20th century was spreading around the world and social work was just beginning in a very professional form, a more managed form. So people wanted to showcase that sort of work. Um, it set the foundations for Salvation Army social work for the next hundred years. The Salvation Army had a strong presence in Canada, so when the opportunity arose to send its contingent out to Britain for the conference, the organisation jumped at the chance. The group of 167 was led by beloved Commissioner David Rees, and as the Empress of Ireland set off from the quay with thousands of passengers on board, the band assembled on deck and played a final hymn, God be with you, Till we meet again. Just a few short hours later, disaster struck. The Empress of Ireland had entered a fog bank and collided with a cargo ship. It sank in just 14 minutes. It was late, most of the passengers were asleep, and they just didn't have the time to get out. In the end, only eight of the Salvation Army contingent were left alive, and 1,012 people died with the ship. Today, we've invited Major David Eldridge and other members of the Australian Salvation Army to honour their lost comrades and play again the hymn last heard as the ship left Quebec. Okay, count you in. Three, two, one. <laughs> The, the song we played today, God Be With You Till We Meet Again, is a very poignant song when you think about it in the context of the Empress of Ireland story. It was often a benediction for meetings. If the big meeting had finished, they'd, they'd sing and play that song until people got back together and gathered again. Um, because they were travelling off to the Congress, the band would have played it on the deck because um, that was the, the blessing almost, that, that we'll see you again and God will be with us until we see you again, tragically. The reunion for most of those people would be in another world, not in the world that they lived in. Mm -hmm. 